Yeah, we'll, we'll go through the introduction. So, before we get too far into the game here, uh, this is going to be in a completely different order today because that's how my Skype window is. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, with us this episode is my brother Wild Weasel. Uh, hi. Who is yeah, also the, who's also the one doing the gameplay, so uh, if you think that he sucks at this game, uh, now you know who to complain about. Uh, okay. Tarzir? Hey, I'm dumb. So <laughs> that. Oh, whatever. Uh, we have Satenga and uh, Joestar, who are both our special guests from Hardcore Gaming 101, as well as Game Club 1990X. Hi. Plug, plug, plug. Wink, plug. wink. Uh, we have Mr. Argent. Assuming right he now. is in fact around, I think he's away. He might be away. He's missing in action. Uh, and then in the call with us as well as Bobinator, though I don't know if he's going to speak up or not. But he he oh, is. Oh, um, I thought I um, needed to be quiet for this. I was, oh, you're I was fine. Say, I, I hope he's here, considering he's the one that wanted me to play this. <laughs> well, I just thought I didn't think about this. So I just assumed I needed yeah, to be quiet. Just, I had to run so. for the bathroom. Never mind. There's Arjun. Well, There's that's a good part. There you it's go. Not, like, pretty for a Metal we, Slug game. we introduced you while you were in the bathroom. Ah, cool. Oh, hey, it's Predator. It it doesn't stay like this Faces for long, are all Bob. Wonky. He's I gotta the say, this art style does not work in 3D. Oh, wait yeah, till you I, see it in the game. Like like these versions are actually really good looking compared to the ones that are in the game. Yeah. Oh, you so who's the developer dog. on this? I mean, is it... Uh... It only ever shows SNK Playmore on the title. Hmm. Random Korean people probably then. I don't hmm. know. Well, Playmore, uh, they're, they're a Korean company, aren't they? I, That's what I, I think I so? don't think they're the Korean ones. I think the I think Playmore are Japanese, and they kind of... They kind of bought back all the stuff that oh, that okay, Gilleth okay. used to have. Oh, okay, I see, I see. But it, even that was kind of messed up and and screwy at the time because because Eolith sort of only had the King of Fighters stuff, and then Mega Enterprises had Metal Slug Four, and then and then there were all those other weird spin-off company things. And then there was that weird Metal Slug 7 on the DS that was just weird. I've only played 1X and 3. That was one of like time travel and stuff, wasn't it? I don't know, I never got far enough to really care. It was, <laughs> it's one that has hit points, rather a lot like this one. Hmm. Yeah, this is a lot of weird things. So this like, came up between 5 and 6, didn't it? Or was it between 4 and 5? Well, it came out in 2006, so if you know your dates... I don't. Honestly, mm. four is the end, so I think it takes place like uh, three to five. So. Well, we do we do know based on the intro movie that that the prime enemy, or at least the, the most visible one, is the uh, the Darryl evil general. Margaret. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Good morning, Commander. Uh, what mission time? So, the knife is on a separate button from shooting, which is weird. And you can totally just carry weapons without actually using them. So this voice thing is like, maybe like a... They've opened fire on it. Sorry. Talk about this. Now you've heard. Contact HQ. Request immediate... Well, it's real weird. It looks like this was released in Europe. Oh, was it? Oh, that's right, because I, I remember I was trying to find a copy of the European version and nobody had it. Uh, has that made it made of it yet? I don't know. Maybe nobody bought it. Yeah. We're about to see why. I know there's still a lot of PlayStation 2 games that didn't have ISOs with them taken. Like, there was a little uh, Pointy's Point deal from a while back. There was a... Uh, quite a couple, actually. Yeah, that's why I'm glad we have projects like Redumb. Mm. This helicopter has wonky camouflage. You're going in alone? It's almost like it's it's designed to be camouflaged against the water. Understood. Mm. Yeah, that's up to you. Which would imply that it is a submersible. Is it that they or do they just like the color blue? I'm not talking about artillery practice. Eh, anything is possible. Yeah, that might be possible, yeah. 
They might have just borrowed it from some ceremonial thing. Let's go with that. Mission one, start. So much of combat in this game can be won just by hmm. holding the R1 button and mashing square. Oh, don't forget to explore around there. Um, like, be careful what crates you blow up and stuff. Because I oh, noticed shoot. there were... That's alright. I was just going to say, I noticed there are some areas that you can get to if you use one of the crates to jump on. And there's like... I see that one now. There's like silver bars and gold bars up there. Except these jumping controls are kind of... Wonky. They're, they're Castlevania-style committed jumps, which doesn't work well in 3D. Yeah. Mm, that's not yeah, good. Yeah. Well, wait, no, they're not committed jumps, but it's just that it's very hard to do subtle stuff with mm. them. You know, you can always tell when a game has bad controls just by watching someone play it. Yeah. Yeah. You can make good controls look bad, but you can't make bad controls look good, right? Uh, I do still have right turn syndrome on my controller, so some of it might in fact also be the emulator's fault. And that's even after rebinding the, uh, the controls yeah. and stuff? Huh. I assume the emulator or my controller driver are at mm. fault, but nothing else does that. Just this emulator. Okay, the, uh, thing into uh, I have screen that's that's folder, and I'll just make it get better. Yeah. Stream, so I'll just deal with it. So when did this come out? Uh, this was like 2006. Yeah, yeah and if you... Uh, mid-2006. If you if you Google search on it, there's like all kinds of uh, teaser articles that come out around the time when it was supposed to come out. You know, IGN did an article on it. Like everybody and their brother was talking about this game, and then nobody. And I, and I think probably a lot of that had to do with the negative reaction they were getting from the press. Yeah. Because if you look at some of the articles, they're like, oh, you know, it looks like it could be an okay game, but it's not really Metal Slug. I don't know why they're giving us this crap. Mm -hmm. There's just also the uh, the prisoners of war sound really weird. Mm -hmm. The Hugh Kataros or whatever. No, I think that's just the one guy who did, did everything. Yeah, yeah, I know the guys like Hugh Kataro, but I don't know if they're all just heard that name or. Well, they have individual names in the, uh, mission ending screen. Randomly generated. Yeah. Didn't Private X have, okay. like, uh, when, when you collected them, they had, like, a different profile for each of them or something? Yeah, like, the PlayStation port of X actually had profiles for them. Oh, wow. So is These mine a separate button for this? Or? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's very strange. Mm. Uh, this is like broke ass yeah, Mega Man I... Legends. Is the impression I'm getting. Soon. This is kind of looks like not... Maximo to me. Uh, yeah. This is not uh, in 2006. I gotta say, like, I'm pretty sure God of War 2 was out by 2006. Hmm. Looks like it's only a bit better than uh 54 or uh, PlayStation. Didn't the really. Didn't Oblivion come out in 2006 too? Yeah. I... Well, it's debatable like whether Oblivion looked better than that character-wise. I, I, yeah, yeah I yeah, wouldn't use Oblivion wants, as a baseline for anything, because potato people. It, it had very pretty grass, though. I liked the grass in Oblivion. Good-looking environments, bad-looking people. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is a budget game, I wonder? Also, uh, this is a lot more stylized. I don't think so. Uh, I think at the time, everything SNK made was budget. Because I, I want to say 2006, they were still kind of recovering from their from their financial troubles. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's true. So what are the gold bars for? Uh, those they get you points, I you, guess. They give you. Well, the gold bars actually you use those later on. Um, you don't have access to the garage until after mission three. But the uh, gold bars you actually use to buy upgrade parts for the slug. And there's actually, there's a whole other vehicle that you can unlock if you buy all the parts for it. That's called the Slug Gunner. And Why I, am I being attacked by giant fish? Oh, uh, cause they came out of the barrel. I think. Enemy wise, it's not too different from Metal Slug 3 with, or with giant enemy crabs and stuff. Ha ha. 
Oh yeah, the the mutant crustaceans. Should you find yourself yeah, in the midst of a crab battle? Fun fact: the hero's full name is Macrius Dennis Ross. Mac Macrius. Mark Macrius? Mark I oh. Spelled. Something a little unworthy. Mm -hmm. I was under one of the thoughts, it's Tom McCall. Hey, yeah. honey, we have to have another son so I can have a kid named Tarmacle. It makes you sound like a brand of candy. Wherever it's going to be. I'm pretty yeah, sure uh, that's Europe. Paramount. Yeah, I was going to say, I think those are English. Oh. Well, I'm an idiot. Uh, disregard that. On that, on that note... Like it didn't have caramel in it. On that note, there's always the, um... Uh, the Toblerone Rolo combo. Oh. Honestly, uh, if this, if this game is one thing... Tell me more. But yeah, what, uh, what do the red bars do? Uh, uh same just, thing. It's just the red ones are worth less, and then the silver ones are the... Or not silver, uh, I think they're like platinum or something. What sort of materials would yeah, those... What's our materials with those red bars being made? Copper, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, Honestly, it could be copper, it could be... Oh, they actually had like, a copper IA unit deal going on here, like blue compositions and everything. Yeah, I don't know, so definitely. Make sure it's cheap, I guess. Yeah, maybe the red bars are made of food. Uh, yeah, oh. they're just... bar steaks. <laughs> yeah. Looking on, uh, movie games, they... Uh, actually, looks like most of the people did work on other Metal Slug pe uh, games, even people, you know, like earlier games too. Uh, also, the people that worked on uh, Maximum Impact KOF games. Huh. Which are not bad. Well, the second one. The uh, first one, if you send back, I was like a right rough prototype to the second. I told you I need to destroy all of Morton's jamming devices. Send back up right now. This sound really wonky too. <laughs> Morden's forces. Thank well, you. I will say. Oh my God. Uh, Morden's you. goons are doing what? I was gonna say. The okay. <laughs> um, hey, I tend response. to talk over and under people frequently, so that's kind of my shit. Yeah. Good on? job, Zanga. More more frequently <laughs> under than over, I find. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your microphone's a little bit lower than. It reminds me of a character thing. from an anime I'd rather not mention right now. Or no. Uh, oh god. No, 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 nothing actually foul in this. You're not- Okay, I was gonna say, you're no. not thinking of Mega Milk, are you? Wait, what? <laughs> I love uh, that comic, god, that's hilarious. <laughs> yep, it's- Gunbuster? Why do you read this shit? I don't. <laughs> I just know that Why he do likes- you know about it? Because anytime Satanga um, mentions- Oh. Uh, oh. Monster. Whoops. Yeah, it's it's That's always crazy. Mega Milk. It's time for uh, skip. I think that that cutscene may be broken. Yeah, let's let's just skip the cutscenes from now on. Um, because I know the game itself works fine. I mean, I was able to get up to like mission six or seven. Yeah, I actually made it to mission three earlier, so I'm just going to skip the rather boring second one. Even though that we're going to be missing out on one of the Metal Slug sequences. I'm sure we'll find another one in a, in very shortly. I was actually um, one of those walkthroughs that I was reading through, trying to find information on the controls and stuff. Uh, says there is a a flying slug that you get in one mission, but it, you only get it in that one mission. I'm guessing so. Welcome to. Egypt, I guess. Here too. Now, does this so one have the uh, uh, stereotypes from uh, two or? I think so. Uh, how does this uh, compare to the Egypt from Mach Two? Uh, Mach Two's is way better. Yeah, it's more realistic, and it has drum abuse too. So, what about the enemies? The generic soldiers, or do you have uh, mummies like? You had or what? Um, I'm not sure what happens later on. I know the the mission that I stopped playing on was where the zombies started showing up. But oh, I didn't I didn't get always zombies. I didn't get too much farther than that though. Well, 
go through zombies, there's probably a- Hey, there's that one guy. Uh, I forget his name, but he's the guy who mid boss plays sort of. I sort of like mm -hmm. how you play. Thank you. Made the heavy machine gun and stuff. Oh, I thought you were talking oh, about the, guys. the dude that looks like Saddam Hussein. Mm. Yeah. I, I just need to be behind, I think, the tank battle going on. You are very behind, because that's about where the game crashed. Yeah, I just did to that, actually. It's okay, Tarzer. We I know like you how he doesn't seem internet. to have a running backwards animation. <laughs> what does he do, just what, moonwalk? He, he, he just... He, he runs forward when you're walking backwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. He has some sort of double leg hip joint syndrome or something. Oh, crap. I just well, that's kind of like uh, the Ikari Warriors games. They, they always look like they were like okay. just swiveling around at their waist. Mm -hmm. Like a He-Man figure. They're secret government robots. <laughs> The Ninja Warriors. It would explain why Ralph can apparently survive nukes. <laughs> They're afraid of slugs and snakes. Ah, uh, control issues again. That's right. If I'm not if I'm not moving forward, my metal slug is basically the tank equivalent of Derek Zoolander. Oh. I, I'm pretty sure that that's an issue on your end, though. I don't think yeah. that's. It's either it's got to be either the emulator. Or just something it doesn't like about your controller. 16 times? What? What kind of controller is it? Xbox 60 or something? It's a uh, DualShock 4 emulating an Xbox controller. Oh. Oh, okay. So it's how's that uh, working out as, uh, I mean, the, the DualShock 4? It's, it's usually pretty good. Like, I'm able to play just about everything else flawless because I. But for some reason, on, on CSX2, it doesn't like going straight to the right. I have to. I was kind of encountering that in a couple of other games, but not as badly. I can't huh. remember what precisely. Oh, well, this Galactic Protector on the Sega Ages Fantasy Zone disc. Mm. I was having trouble with that too. Mm. You, you might, you might just need to D-pad, but you know what it might be too. You might just need to go in and set up a dead zone for it, and um, mm. in the drivers. You had tried that, but it didn't really do anything. Oh. So how did the various weapons work compared to the, the side-scrollers? Pretty much the same. Like, you still yeah. have the, uh, the Iron Lizard, you have the... Um... I think, I seem to recall the Rocket Launcher is a little bit different. For one, he doesn't say Rocket Launcher when you pick it up, which is kind of a shame. Especially the first of all, Metal Club. Like it, it sounds like it's the same guy doing all the all the the narrator voice and everything, but they they like re-recorded them all, so it sounds different. Is I'm it not more sure. half-hearted, like the regular dialogue? No, no, they're actually good. Oh, that's right, I forgot you can make the slug jump. I don't know how I forgot that was a thing, considering that's hey, in the Arjun, original that's game. getting pretty loud. Uh, it's getting oh, hard to hear sorry. everybody. So Give me a mute that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's funny how I've, I've funny learned itself. to like filter it, that out now. <laughs> Charles vaguely like the... Uh, oh no, I don't see it. I, I, I don't. What it's all it does, does <laughs> except for the fact that there's a knife button. And you can switch weapons. I mean, like the metal slug itself. Does it control vaguely like the original game, except for the tank controls, which admittedly makes sense? Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty much just the tank controls you got to worry about. You can still wave the guns up and down and everything. Only if you're locked on to something, because otherwise there's no way to aim up and down. Just in general, really. So, Metal Slug 4 sucks. Discuss? Yeah. I haven't played it yet, so I wouldn't know. 
All I know is it replaced the coolest character in the area, I guess, with some other chumps. Trevor and yeah. Nadia. And it was actually Never. a disadvantage to play Trevor because his melee attack caused him to stand still no matter what he was doing, so... Who the hell thought that was a good idea? Well, clearly play more. I think it was outsourced. Or, well, yeah, whoever did it. Mega Enterprises. Because, remember, SNK at that point had basically gone bankrupt because... Because Aru's wanted to turn them into a pachinko company, and they didn't want to. I, I still don't understand that. Why would you take a company that is, like, beloved and makes great games, and then say, I want you to just make pachinko games now? Hey man, Sammy was beloved, made all sorts okay. of memorable games, like... And then they bought Sega. Hang on, hang on. I have a painful allegory. Why would you take... Uh, long time honored PC developer castrate them just force them to make multiplayer maps for your super popular franchise. Okay, that's a point too. Oh, last Raven? For Raven Software. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I was, actually, right I, was I was actually gonna mention Rareware too with their Oh um, man, yeah, that their was state is they're basically they're basically limited to making Kinect games now, aren't they? Yeah. And this is getting depressing. Killer Instinct because that's double helix now. Slash Iron Galaxies. Mission failed. Well, at least it's not that's Platinum. Let's be over. It could be Platinum making it, and that, so see, it could be worse. I don't know. Platinum are at least not Double Helix. Yeah, true. Yep. And and as I said last night, they they actually did make Infinite Space on the DS, which is uh, definitely a notch in their belt. So. So, yeah. what about, um... Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Oh, is there extra life in this? Or... Extra no. Life? I think I've healed from, like, medkits and the like. But aside from that, if you die, you basically have to go back to a checkpoint. That's pretty shit. Well, this isn't really meant to be, like, the arcade game either. It's, it's more of a... It's it's a console experience. Cause I mean, you think think about the the average length of the the arcade games. It's usually like four or five stages, right? With the yeah. with the last stage being exceptionally long. This one, um, according to the walkthroughs that I was looking at, this one is eleven stages. Oh. And there's actually um, some differences. Like once you unlock other characters, you can go back and play missions as other characters, and there'll be slight things changed for them. And there's there's actually some secret items that you can only collect as other characters, that they don't show up for for Marco or, or whoever. So, Theo and, uh... Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I, th I think they just don't show up in the stage at all because again it's it's different versions of the stage for for each character. Yeah, that's a bit yeah, it's awesome. eh, not really. Gives you an excuse to play through the game again. Yeah, you shouldn't need that. Oh, I feel like playing this again because it's really fun stuff. Well, the other the other thing you get too is um. I was reading, again in this, this walkthrough that I found, they were talking about uh, in the, the different sub-weapons you get throughout the game, because you, you don't just get the grenades, you get like molotovs and, and some of the other stuff that you would find in the arcade games. Um, there is a sub-weapon that you can only get by beating the game once. And once you, once you unlock it, you can use it infinitely, it has no ammo. It's literally a miniature version of the monolith that you have to fight at the end of Metal Slug 3. What? And when you when you drop the miniature version, it'll it waits a few seconds and then it summons the gigantic version that blows up everything in its path. So it's I actually remember what the monolith is. Also, I just got to the mission. It's, the, it's like the one of the boss at the end of stage two that that. They drop on the ground, and you have to shoot them to make them sink. All right. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, because otherwise they totally wreck your shit. 
I have actually managed to uh, do decently well before figuring out, oh hey, I can shoot these and they go down. <laughs> That's what the rocket launcher does differently. Okay. Yeah, you have to manually aim it with the lock on button. Yeah. See about starting over on easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I meant to warn you about that. It, it does a, a, a very good job of deceiving you and making you feel like you're doing well. And then you hit... You hit that level and... It's okay though, because it means we get to show off mission 2 that I skipped. Stage 3 is always the jerk point okay. in an action game. Let's say where the difficulty notches up. Alright, drive that tank, Zoolander! <laughs> I guess it's almost like an awful action game, and you can do so much better. Like, like say, any of the Rise of the Clank games, for starters. Yeah. Well, well I mean, they have they like, have their bits of I frustration as well. Any of the DMCs also, but I guess it's a somewhat different style. Actually, what game can this best be for? Outside so all the different weapons uh, have the, their own models, right? Mostly, yeah. Since they don't have to shove things together for sprite reasons. There's, there's a game the battery drop. right now. I I want to say it was part of the, the popular Choro Q I don't series care. of racing down. games in Japan. But America got it called Seek and Destroy. Apparently, it's it's basically about miniature tanks fighting each other. To the, to the point where, in the story mode, the tanks do the talking. <laughs> what? Well, that sounds like it's, that. It's, um, it's been, it's not even like like uh, hu the human tanks thing that came out on the Royale. It's it's actually the tanks are driving around and greeting each other and and delivering orders and things like that. So it's like cars, only everything is armed. Yeah, they're, they're not even anthropomorphized tanks, they're just little micro-machine tanks. That sounds absolutely terrifying. Because I want to say choro Q is basically Japan's equivalent of micro-machines. It's not the um, same thing, but... It kind of is, uh, yeah. Uh, they, they've uh, actually uh, told me uh, release some of their... Uh, well, it's like Takara told me they release some of those uh, over here, but yeah, they they're more of a wind-up car or not, you know, like those ones that you pull back and then they go zipping. Yeah, yeah, they're basically like that. I I want to say that they had a, a brief surge of popularity in like the 50s or 60s when some company licensed them as penny racers because there was a little slot in the back of them that you could stick a penny in and then it would do wheelies when you let go. Shotgun. I'm, I'm probably very wrong. In fact, it would probably be wiser if you could look it up yourself than taking my word for it. Um, <laughs> let me never give us a to take a look at the lock really okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'll be like, yeah, right for nice. actually. No, I demand you stay. Uh, actually, duty. Weasel, you are correct. First, first made by Takara in 1978 and sold extensively in Western markets as Penny Racer. Um, I'm... There was, uh, there was a Nintendo 64 game being made about them that wound up getting cancelled, but I think there's prototypes floating around. I'm looking up here. I'm gonna have to look up one of those prototypes and see if anybody's got one available to download, because now that I own an EverDrive cartridge, I can probably actually try playing it. No, it actually did get released. Oh. Was it like a Blockbuster exclusive or something? doesn't say so. There, there were a surprising lot of Nintendo 64 games that were blockbuster exclusive. It was, like, uh... Fighter 63 and a third. Uh, Correct. Oh, it's not actually... Yeah, the, the I have that game. It's pretty awful. So uh, it was, it was developed by uh, Locomotive Games, and then THQ published it. Ah, uh, THQ. Locomotive Games is actually the company that, uh... Uh, used to be Pacific Coast Power and Light, so it's actually the same company that did Road Rash 64, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah, them. And then later on they did, um, let's see, 
They did the Wii version of Destroy All Humans, um, PSP games of Cars and Ratatouille. Looks like they haven't. Oh, they haven't done anything since 2008, so that's not uh, seeing anything damn. better than me. I'm pretty sure nothing actually attacked me there. I just healed over because I touched that guy. Well done, sir. I'm gonna keep playing though because it is my civic duty. <laughs> Ah, uh, hell, I'm back here. Shotgun! Heavy machine gun! Heavy machine gun! I could also send you my, um, my memory card file that's saved up to stage 6 or whatever. Well, I'm gonna have to figure out how to where the memory cards are stored. Are they in a just a subfolder in the emulator program? Uh, it's wherever the wherever the default is. Mine's actually in the game uh, emulator folder, but uh, it's eleven total. I'm not counting the different versions for other characters. Let me see. Quit shooting at me, that's rude. Yeah, mine's mine's in the emulator folder, it's just a folder called memcard. Okay. So let me let me upload that to uh Dropbox for you really quick. If you could rename them too after you've done so, I would appreciate that, just so I don't have to do much fiddling about. Yeah. It's just it's just called x.ps2. Okay. The default name though is MCD001. Yeah. Like, like honestly, my the general feeling that I get from it is it's not as bad as I think people were making it out to be. But it's. Uh, you know, this this is kind of in that infuriating gap of uh, it's it's not it's not good enough to be great, but it's not bad enough to be fun to make fun of. Yeah. Well, it's it's just mediocre, mediocre, which is a, a mediocre game is actually a worse sin than a flat out bad game. Well, let me let me put it this way: if if like if I had to choose between buying this game and buying like you know one of your halos or call of duties or you know the the cookie cutter shooters as they are known now i would pick this one because you know at least it's unique it's it's got its own thing going for it it, it looks like it's oh i'm sorry uh i was gonna say it looks like they just didn't have the experience with the 3d yet but if they'd uh, oh, know, yeah. practice a little more or something they probably could have had like a i guess a it doesn't uh, you know, look bad. It does, it does occur to me. This was about the same time that they came out with King of Fighters Maximum Impact. It is. It is. Uh... Hmm. So this this would basically be them trying to reacquaint themselves with 3D. Yeah. After after the 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 dismal failure of the Hyper Neo Geo 64. Did, now, did any of that ever make it to America, or was that just like, did they ever? Some do... of it did actually. There are there are U.S. region ROMs for most huh. of the major games. Strangely, the most popular one was the racing game that they made. But then you also had Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition, and the Samurai Showdown Warriors Rage games. I think they called them on the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the Reiki one. Yeah, I really want to play Bariki One. Supposedly, that one's the only actually good game on the system. But you know, maybe it's just because I'm, I kind of, I have a bizarre fascination with being able to play games that are otherwise unplayable. Like if, well, a, I if think... a game, if a game can't be emulated, it kind of achieves legendary status through that alone. I think Mames actually starting to work on Hyper Neo Geo now. Uh, last I saw, they were having a lot of trouble with the protection system. 
which, you know, not surprising, considering it's taken them like 15 years to get right into to work. Mm. Which, by the way, they did recently. Yeah. And it's quite awesome. Just uh, make sure you're playing actual right into and not right into new. I assume What's that was a, like a budget hardware re reissue of the system that it doesn't have the FM chip in it. So, pretty competitive, isn't it? Is there any weapons that are just in this? Or? There is a sniper rifle you get later on, and I think a grenade launcher. But it's more like a like a quake style, you know, contact grenade kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, because there's a there's a boss you have to fight with the grenade launcher, or um, excuse me, not the grenade launcher, the sniper rifle. Huh. They just pretty much steal it from a uh, Metal Gear Solid, or does it have its own thing going on? No, it's a, it's a different kind of thing, because it's like okay. it's like this big giant spider thing crawling around the ceiling, and you have to you have to uh, like get way far away from it and then shoot it in the weak point. Ooh. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you. Like across the across the room, far away. You yeah. Know. But it it sucks because there's basically the room is a it's like a circular room, and the only area that you can walk on is this this narrow ledge around the outside of it because yeah. if you if you fall down into the pit in the middle then you can't hit the guy because you can't see his weak point oh well too far down uh-huh just wrong angle <coughs> stuff. yeah well i won't say it's like it's like up underneath his legs or something i can't remember exactly between the body and the thorax about something like that yeah I hate the way this rocket launcher aims. Why couldn't they have just let you lock on with it? Because then it would be too powerful. It also has that really infuriating thing where it starts out moving really slow and only after a second does it get full speed. I think that's how uh, some real life rocket launchers work, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in this it's like infuriatingly slow. And also, thanks a lot, guys, for running me over. <laughs> Is there anything else I can do in this game? I don't think there is. No. Um, why don't you see if you can import in my memory card and and yeah. load up where I'm at. Go fight some zombies. <laughs> As a random fun fact, the music was composed by Toshikazu Tanaka, who also did the music to Metal Slug 5, formerly a composer for SNK back in the early days, like Akari Warriors and Guerrilla War. Uh, he left yeah. the company, but then sort of came back to it with the second party developer Noise Factory, who uh, handled some of SNK's games for the early Zeros uh, when they were in dire financial straits. Hey, Weasel, I have to ask, what is your desktop background? Oh, it's uh, one of the title cards from Space Dandy. Oh, Lord. Okay. I'll just zoom out so that you can see it here. <laughs> space <laughs> wallpaper. It's a dandy wallpaper in space. I think I'm actually only a little bit behind it now. Yes, we're, we're all a bunch of nerds, aren't we? <laughs> Womp womp. Your, your face is a big nerd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A classic response. By the way, more cheap plugs. If you have the means to watch Space Dandy, do so. It is amazing. I haven't although, seen it, but I've heard good things. Although we don't get any money for that, so... Yeah, I wish, but... Let me just make sure that the options are correct. Yeah, that'll be fine. Controller, nothing is weird here. Vibrations on, yada yada yada. Yeah, the only the only thing I changed was I turned the speech all the way up because the voices just cracked me up. So you should have so access we're up to, to the we're up to mission four now. I think I'm actually okay. going to take that one. I was gonna say if you want to check out the garage too, you can. Nah. Okay. So what's in the garage? Just upgrades for the mail slug or? Yeah. Also okay. use your gold points to buy to buy like RPG style upgrades for the characters, but it's stuff oh, like okay, cool. like lock on range, max life, stuff like that. 
Eh. Stuff that, by the um, grand scheme, hmm. most of it doesn't really matter. This is not where I left off. I started mission four. Oh, that's why. Okay. And I'm back. This mission sucks, though. Seriously. Hmm. Minecarts are always cursed in any game, dating back to the uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom game by Atari. <laughs> oh lord. Well, it's not even the minecarts, it's just there's so many blind corners in this okay. this area, and they always have tanks hiding behind them. And... You wouldn't um, think check that your, it's be able to hide. Check your weapons, too, because you, sh you usually are able to carry specials between levels. Stuff, right? Assuming you have any ammo. Ah yes, iron lizard. I'm just gonna test fire this one. Oh, that was underwhelming. Well, yeah, it helps if you have a target to fire at. That. The enemy chaser. Is that what was test fired? Yeah. No, that's the iron lizard. Now, uh, fun fun fact about Iron Lizard. Do you know where that came from? I do not. It's actually from uh, Lupin the Third. There was a uh, thing about a uh, weapon that if you put like a strand of somebody's hair in this bomb, it would chase after somebody until it killed them. And uh, they were called the Iron Lizards, and they look just the same. Huh? That sounds little, silly. Little I'm gonna have and to the, watch that at some point. <laughs> considering my only experience with Lupin is the Castle of Cagliostro. It's it's in the I think it's the second series that they've got it. So uh, if you have Hulu, uh, I think they've got pretty much like uh, always all of them or something on there. So yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll have to see if there is any place else I can get can get a hold of it. Incidentally, I wonder if that one PS2 loop in the third game is any good, because that one actually got an English release for some reason. Which I know, at least... in the third again? Uh, that's the Thief. He's the, the one that looks, like, really weird with the sideburns. Yeah, he's, he's got sideburns, yellow necktie, and depending on the series, either a pink or a green suit jacket. Or red. Well, yeah. actually red in most of them, but then they, uh... You know, they're, uh... But he looks like a pimp or whatever, and then he's always... I don't know, he's like it's, real... It is violently 70s. Yes. Well, 60s actually, that's where it started, but... Uh, the, uh, the creator of the manga, his name, or his uh, pen name is Monkey Punch. And he's a real big fan of uh, Western stuff, so that's one of the reasons. Uh, ah. Yeah. Well, a lot Monkey of it Punch. seems to have a really, a really James Bond influence, especially the castle of Cagliostro. Uh, yeah, well, that was that was my first uh, exposure to the game. Uh, I'm sorry, to the series because of uh, there was a game called Cliffhanger that used footage from that and another one of his movies and like uh, kind of cobbled it together in a. Why is his pen name a Monkey Punch? Uh, he thought it sounded funny. I I have to wonder, does he have any relation to that weird Game Boy Color uh, breeding battling sim Monkey Puncher? No. Oh God, what? <laughs> Because that uh, game is just weird. <laughs> and I have no idea how it ever got a US release. You know, usually you should probably use a more powerful weapon. You picked up like Monkey three heavy machine guns. Monkey Puncher Neural is a monster breeding game with monkeys and a very, very bad translation. You said Neural. You meant Tarzir, right? Alright, I'm sorry. Yeah, it has nothing to do with Metal Gear. <laughs> you guys sound a bit similar. <laughs> yeah, I told you, I'm, I'm sorry. Your face sounds a bit similar. Ah. <laughs> Your so mom's face. Like you? just, just remember, Neural is the one that gets our references about old people things. Tarzir is not. <laughs> so oh, wait, uh, Metal Gear what did I sound like again? I know I sound like someone, but I can't remember who. Um... I forget, are you the one that does the Kermit the Frog voice? Or, no, you're the Mickey Mouse guy. Uh, I can do it too! I do Kermit the Frog, what the heck, man? <laughs> Yay! Hi, everybody! I can't do it. Well, you see, regular puppets are usually made out of felt, where I am I I am actually a real-life talking frog. 
Seriously though, who am I similar to? I have to be similar to someone. Everyone is similar to someone else. I'm not. I'm similar to Maybelline. Checkpoint. The smoker's voice. I've updated Extra my life. Oh, are you are you doing the gritty reboot now of Marco? <laughs> I've updated my journal. I don't remember what the blue one is. Mm. I think the blue one might be just escape. <coughs> Could be. Because the red ones, the red ones are you have to kill everything before you can proceed. I'm not remembering what the blue ones are. Uh, I don't know that either. Well, that one pretty much functions like a kill everything match too. Hmm. Maybe it like, destroy the car that's spawning okay. people. Firebomb. That could, could be. be too, yeah. This is a game we we need to get Ryusui in on and see if we can <laughs> just give us oh, a... Ryusui. What would you get from translating this, though? Most of the porn stuff's already in English. Well, yeah. Just just like the, the subtitles for those areas and stuff like that. Wait, I've been here. Yeah, this is where you came from. This makes me want to go play a rareware platformer, I don't know why. It really makes me want to play Jet Force Gemini, and it makes me sad that I can't. Mm. I've never actually played too much of that. I played a bit of it to the start of the first level-ish, but... I, Is it I, any good? I sort of kind of beat the game, but I there was like a bunch of stuff that I still hadn't unlocked yet. Like, I, I beat it, but I didn't get the good ending or whatever. Yeah, the one where you have to rescue every single tribal and nobody has to be killed. Mm. Like, you, nobody nobody is allowed to die or be missed. It's a super duper mega happy ending. It's like Roller Goes to the Rescue or whatever. Oh, Jeez. God. Oh yes. No. Rolo to the rescue, the source of one of my favorite Bob Nader quotes on the file. Oh god, was that one in this middle game. game that they could use like digging around cave full of spiders and some more shit? Is that is that the one about the, the beaver died? Does that mean I have to start over? Sorry. Yeah. Was there a conveyor belt with a bunch of small bars on it earlier? I think so. I can't remember oh, wait, now. Did you guys say a uh, roll over to the rescue or roll over to the rescue? Roll over, like, roll like, like the 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 chocolate can. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Like, so I was thinking of uh, Robbie Rollo, the one early midway game. Like like Rollo gum. So why is health in such short supply? Probably because it's only ever dropped by the prisoners. Great. Cause this is metal slug, man. This is a hard game. Alright. This is an action game for hardcore action gamers. For super players. But it has a target lock mm. on. Because he has and it, and it lets you Oh shit. Right. Oh, this is that boss I was thinking of. What? This the isn't, spider? This isn't the sniper rifle one, I don't think. Ceiling turret. Great. Uh, well, this is certainly a more Metal Slug like boss. Come yes. Of it. Although I think this is the first boss you've actually had to fight in this game, isn't it? Aside from just random tanks. Yeah. See, that's that's the weird thing about this game. Like, it, it totally is a Metal Slug game, but it's got a completely different pacing to it. It's like, one of, one of the great appeals of Metal Slug, in my opinion, is the, is the <laughs> ridiculous boss designs. So, yeah, okay, so it kind of disappoints me that this is the first boss that actually fits that criteria, and we're in mission four. Although, they, although Satenga for... mentioned yesterday that the the last boss you had to fight is like a gigantic fleshy face, so uh, I might have to see I if like I can find some video of that. Flesh face, McAllen. Argent. The thing I like most about Metal Slug is how relatively fair everything is. Everything's going to be your fault if you get yourself killed. Because you didn't dodge right and 
or you happen to walk into a soldier. Yeah. It's all really nicely controlled. It's really manageable. Iron Mother! Yeah, that's the weak point right there, is the part on the top. You have to, like, knock it down and then hit the top part while it's down there and hit. You know, I wonder, are there any primarily 3D games that really well, or really pulled off uh, the whole mouse slug style as well? I'm trying to think of one. Uh... Most, most of the ones I can think of were actually more like commando type games, like uh, Expendable by Rage Software. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. And then of course you got stuff like uh, Raiden 4 and all that, where it's all just pretty much a 2D game being played on a 3D play field. I might actually add Expendable to a little bit. Because yeah. I'm wondering if it actually is possible to translate that kind of really showy boss to a 3D environment anyway, and I'm pretty sure it is, but I just can't think of any specific examples. There's a bunch of weapons down there if you were running. Like, there are yeah, got to be more games with bosses that cool. Yeah, there are. They all disappeared. And I'm dead. And you're dead. Oh. Weird. Yeah, see, you really do not want to be down in that pit. Like, at all. Hmm. So, yeah, that was mission four. We're just going to pretend that I beat it and I'm going to hit the continue button. <laughs> from the menu. <laughs> I'm not sure where that's gonna put you though. Oh. Mission five, probably. That was a really short cutscene. Oh yeah, you skipped it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, was it really just him falling through that hole in the load screen? Oh <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> zombies with swords. Oh, they have swords. I didn't notice that. So these are like Crash Bandicoot style zombies. <laughs> <laughs> They're not actually zombies, they're just uh, broken clones of what's his name, the lab assistant. Knowing Crash Bandicoot, it's probably Ed something. I mean, seriously, you've got Ed Jin and Trophy. the other ones I can never remember. There's Andrio, right? Yeah. I can only ever remember the ones from Warp, so I'm not any help. As far as I'm concerned, the series is dead past the first game. Or not yet. I don't know. Has anyone played any of the Crash games beyond the third? I'm told Twin Sanity is supposed to be really good. I played the demo of uh, Crash of the Titans on the 360 and it seems... It seems interesting, but not fantastic. I haven't played even myself, but I do know a dude who's a big fan. Twin Sanity is pretty alright, but I haven't played in a while. I, think, I mostly you... remember that, there's a, that there was a Katamari-like sequence where where Crash and Cortex are in a cartoon-style brawl, and you basically roll them around like a giant boulder okay. through, through a uh, huge marble maze. Oh, what was the one really bad one that one of you guys played that one time? Oh, Mind Over Mutant. Yeah, who was uh, basically that? Was basically that came from or? Activision wanting to turn it into a God of War kind of game. And what platform was that for? PS2. All of them. Um, you have to unlock the spin attack. That's all that should be really said. And then yeah, you can spin for a few seconds before you get dizzy. It so, sounded lackluster at best, or rather it looked lackluster. What stream was that for, anyway? I don't think that was for any of our mainline streams, come to think. I might have streamed it once, maybe. I have ISO. Hmm. Also, it's full of stupid pop culture references, so you get to look forward to that, too. Oh, yeah, because so oh, yeah, they, they gave him a voice, didn't they? So that was the biggest mistake they ever could have made, was giving Crash a voice. Silent protagonists should generally stay silent, unless they have a reason to speak up. I mean, yeah, look at Link. 
Actually, you know what? If they were going to give Crash Bandicoot a voice, they should have had him be voiced by the guy that used to do those commercials. Oh, yeah. So it's a weird sound. Oh, yeah. Sound that was really weird. weird. <laughs> put like the suit the on. It's going to stretch. I'm not going to fit in this. It's going to stretch. Just put it on. <laughs> if Crash were still relevant nowadays, it probably be No, uh, probably something like someone like Charlie Adler. Yeah, where the hell's he been lately? I know Charlie he's Day? in. Uh, no, I think he's in Revengeance, movie. actually. Oh yeah. He's still doing things because he showed up in I know that voice. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. Uh, I know that name, and I cannot think of why. You froze. Yeah, Buster uh, Bunny. Yeah, Buster Bunny. Oh yeah. Red guy. He was, he was everyone in couch. And then uh, the mask in uh, Splatterhouse 2010. Uh, wait. Things. Oh, jeez, my brain. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jim Cummings, who is also uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh nowadays. The last thing he was in was Skyrim, I think. They were talking about, uh, but I remember in that uh, in that movie they were talking about. Uh, it's it's kind of hard for the voice actors nowadays because uh, they will hire actors, you know, from movies and TV shows and stuff, and they'll do the voices for these games. But then it's cutting into, you know, like the dedicated voice actor stuff. Uh, yeah, a lot of times the really actual fun. actors barely put any heart into it. Yeah, exactly. Like they well, yeah. Here. Look at the look at the CSI games. Oh my gosh! They got all of the PC voice cast, but half of them just sound like they're literally just reading the lines. They're not trying to act the lines. I did... Jonathan... not even trying to overact the lines. I didn't even realize this. He was the voice of Professor uh, Monkey for a head. That makes huh? sense really? in respect. Huh. Is his kind of voice. Who was who? Uh, Charlie Adler. And I think Jim Cummings was psycho. You know what? That would not surprise me. Let me check that out. That's such a good show, but apparently everyone loves hates it for some reason. Yes, Jim Jim Cummings was psycho, and then Jeff Bennett was Peter Puppy and the narrator. I don't know what the hell is going on here. I was talking about the voice actor Chad. That's kind of a subject I like. <laughs> We've kind of run out of things to say about Metal Slug. Okay, All so... All I can really say on the subject is, uh, Kathos here bust. She does uh -oh. So do we want it? do we want to do a, uh, final verdict on this one, then? Eh, uh, sure. we've been, we've been going for about an hour, so... Yeah, it's... I don't think this level's going to end. <laughs> uh, care if I make my remarks first, or...? Go right ahead. So it's alright as a game, but kind of subpar as a Metal Slug game. Good soundtrack, yeah. though. I'd say yeah. it doesn't really feel like a Metal Slug game at all. It's, just, it's it, it seems has... like this is the kind of game that it, that would have been a lot more enjoyable if they weren't supposed to hold to the Metal Slug template. Hmm. And yeah. I do feel like it might be possible to make a good Metal Slug game in 3D, but you need to have more of a dedicated team than this. Yeah. Also, probably they, if, your they hardware too. A, if they well, made it's not so much a Metal Slug, it, yeah, it, it's... it'd be something more like Shadow Complex, I think. Mm. Yeah, have it have it still play like a 2D game, but then occasionally have moments where you can shoot into the background. Yeah, like do something kind of like, a, say, Rayforce, for example. Contra is uh, behind the view phases. Possibly. Mm. And actually, uh, come to think of it, this is actually a lot like the uh, Gradius game Solar Assault, for many reasons. The Contra games in PS2 are actually pretty good, though. Yeah. I've heard the PS1 ones weren't so great though, or the Apple nah, Lucia, whatever really it is. Yeah. I haven't actually played any of them past like three and four. So, so basically, what you guys are saying is, if this had come out in the U.S., you guys probably would have bought it and then been disappointed with it. Yeah. Most definitely. James Bond Racing all over again. I, again. Have, I, I couldn't see this game being sold in the U.S. for more like True. more than thirty bucks, if that. Well, most SNK games at the time did come out at full price, and I was summarily disappointed by a lot of them already. Like, I actually owned King of Fighters 11 and Neo Geo Battle Coliseum at 
at this time in addition to the first maximum impact and I wound up getting rid of every single one of them because you know yeah, it's I wasn't, wasn't a fan of any of them really you're, you're a man after my own heart you spend first and then regret later well it's like I I had this 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 naive viewpoint that how could it possibly be bad if it's from a series I trust and a developer I love yeah or strike that reverse that I mean I was I was still going through my King of Fighters nut phase at the time like I was reading all the translation guides of all the stuff they say in battles and figuring out that like this character wants to marry this other character or these two have a friendly rivalry or these two these two will randomly greet each other in Kansai dialect when they meet. Was that the, the same King, King of Fighters lore? Was that the same period when you had uh, printed out color printer pictures of certain characters from games and had them hanging on your wall like posters? Yeah, I think those wound up getting shredded and recycled because they didn't survive a move. <laughs> Whoa, that's the first like English movie. subtitle I've seen. Oh hey, you got to Alan O'Neill. Perennial mm. <laughs> series sub boss. Who's... I knew you showed up. I'm going to he skip him. It's a Alan lot like how the player you again, plays. But I don't have time for a leisurely reunion. It's almost time for a... Whoa, what's up with the uh, rocket up there? I think it, it's uh, trying to drill into the wall. Oh. It's very nervous. <laughs> like, oh, I hope nothing bad happens to me. So does Alan O'Neill still fight like a, a player character? Or, I don't or, know. You know. He's not even in here. I think he. I think he escaped. Yeah, because he didn't. He didn't want to get his ass beat again. He didn't want to get eaten by a killer whale for no reason. And now I'm dead. And so just, I yeah. think I'm going to call this the end of the game. Just, uh, yeah, yeah Alan good. O'Neill gets skeletonized by a land shark. Like it just walks up on the legs it totally has, bites off what is most of his head and walks off, and it's never mentioned again. Hang on. I, I may I, or may I, not be totally making this up. I remember up. that. I do have my final comment for this. Mm. If yes, Mel Sug were still relevant today, Troy Baker would voice Marco. <laughs> uh, only if Nolan North gets to be Tarma. And, uh, Steve Bloom has to be in there somewhere, I'm sure. Every single prisoner. Alan O'Neill. Yeah, he, w he would definitely be the prisoners, because he seems to be doing that kind of, huh. like, backup role nowadays. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So wait, who gets to be Alan O'Neill? Hmm. Uh, someone... Someone boisterous. Um... Celebrity uh, voice uh, talent. Brian Blessed. Yes. Oh god. <laughs> Brian Blessed. <laughs> Hey, if they can get him to narrate the trailer for Super Putty on PS4, then they can get him to do that. <laughs> uh, Must not be that expensive to hire, I guess, these days. I, I'm pretty sure that, that he's at that point, that stage in his career where he will do anything for anybody that involves making fun of himself and, and showing off his talents at the same time.